Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video for The Division. Once again, it's Thursday and as you should all know by now, every Thursday I bring you guys a new Division video talking some more about what we currently know about the game. Last week I spoke about the concept of influence, taking over different zones within the game world and how it triggers resulting effects around you. So if you haven't seen that, then be sure to check it out. But in today's video, I'm not actually going to be talking about one thing in particular, but instead I'm going to do a bit of a news roundup. There's been a lot of stuff floating around the internet lately, alpha rumours, GDC schedule, and most recently a community Q&A. So I wanted to try and condense as much of that down into one video as possible. So with that being said, let's begin. First up, I'm going to start with a topic that everybody wants to know about. When will there be a playable alpha or beta or some sort of demo basically any chance to get our hands on the game before it comes out? Well, firstly, it appears that recently there was a pre-alpha load test available to what I would imagine to be a very small group of people. The reason I bring this up however is because it seems that one such person was a chap known as I'm one sneaky beaver on Twitter and at the time of the pre-alpha ending he stated that there is and I quote lots of potential there and that it already runs better than Assassin's Creed Unity. Now while Assassin's Creed Unity might not be the highest quality bar for a pre-alpha to run better than a fully finished and polished game that's saying something. And if they're at a stage where they are performing load tests then I'd like to think some sort of public alpha be it closed or open might not be too far away. For those of you wondering, load tests are used to test performance, so aside from obviously wanting to ensure that the game runs well, it could well be that they were testing performance for a wider group of people to see if it will stand up to lots of players logging in at the same time, which is obviously what would happen during an alpha. Anyway, that is the first bit of news. Moving on from there and still relating to the alpha, some users on Reddit did some data mining on the official Division website recently, and in doing so they uncovered this. What you see here is an extra tab on the website navigation that links to an alpha page. Currently it's a blank page and only visible if you perform some website wizardry, but the fact that it's in place, albeit behind the scenes, again could well indicate to some sort of registration page to allow users to sign up for whatever they have planned. Then on top of that, information nugget number 3, which again could well back this up. GDC, or Game Developers Conference, is just around the corner, March the 2nd to the 6th to be precise, and they recently put up their developer talk schedule. If you pay close attention, you'll see that there are not one, but two division talks. The first one on Monday March the 2nd is by the lead level designer and the second one on Friday the 6th of March is by the senior technical director. Now sure, GDC is far more industry and developer focused than something like E3 or Gamescom so don't expect some sort of all singing all dancing gameplay trailer that you see on stage at something like E3. But that being said, the stars do seem to be aligning. A pre-alpha load test, a hidden alpha tab on the official website and two talks at the upcoming game developers conference. Could an alpha date be around the corner? All I will say is that you guys can guarantee as soon as I know anything I will be sure to let you know, but at the moment we're just going to have to speculate. Then the last bit of information that surfaced once again as a result of the pre-alpha is that the game will run at 900p on Xbox One and 1080p on PS4. Do bear in mind however that this hasn't come from an official source and it is still in pre-alpha, so while you're welcome to believe whatever you like, I'd still say until you get the word from an official source then take this with a pinch of salt. So that is everything we currently have about the alpha right now. Next, I want to talk about some questions that were answered in the first episode of the Division Game Podcast. If you haven't already listened to it, then they kicked this off today. The first episode was awesome and it's a really good chance to not only get to know some of the guys behind the game, but also find out more about the game itself. So if you want to listen to the whole podcast yourself, then I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below. But in the meantime, let's talk about the answers that I've extracted. First up, the topic of Dark Zones came up again, a question I asked on Twitter a while back. And while specifics weren't given, we did get a little more insight. Firstly, as you know, Dark Zones are public PvP spaces. The reason they were designed like that is because PvP in games can get very competitive. And if you're not into the whole PvP thing and just want to enjoy your own single player experience, then if it's forced on you, it can alienate some players. So the decision to create this public zone is so that people can consciously choose whether or not they want to enter the zone. And that way, when you do enter, you're presented with this risk reward scenario. You don't know how many players are out there and that could potentially come and ruin your day, but the draw of potentially awesome weapons is what compels you to go in regardless. And while on the topic of potentially awesome weapons, another question that was asked was to do with the concept of permanent item loss when in a dark zone. 
Now I covered this in my video two weeks back when I spoke about extraction, but when you're in a dark zone you will stumble across weapons which, if you wish to keep, you need to extract with in order to save them. What I didn't cover however is that these weapons are special. See, all we've seen so far is footage of an agent collecting a weapon, but what we now know is that these weapons will be different. Quite how we don't know, but it could be some sort of awesome mod, maybe a laser sight or a thermal scope, maybe even a grenade launcher. Who knows, but either way it's enough to make them desirable. If you successfully extract with it, you will keep it forever. And if you die after that point, you won't lose it. But if you die before you extract, then you can and will lose the weapon you just found. So be careful. And now for the very last question. I saved the best one till last. This question was actually asked by my good friend Parler, aka Mantruce on YouTube, and he asked, how open is multiplayer? As expected, the answer began by explaining that dark zones provide open world areas for people to freely engage in PvP, and the wider open world is instanced and reserved as an invite-only co-op experience. However, the extra bit of information was about an area known as the Hub. These are non-combat social zones where you can meet other people. So in an RPG framework, these would be cities, and this is super exciting. It's been detailed in the past that the Division will have certain crafting elements and also a black market, but just how that worked we didn't yet know. However, now that we know there is a hub or a central zone where lots of players can meet, this now makes much more sense. I'd imagine you'd venture to the hub to sell your items, stock up on stuff you're low on, perhaps even craft, and even sell stuff on the black market. Maybe, taking it a step further, you could even party up in the hub and go off together into the world. Either way, some pretty cool things to think about, and on that awesome bit of information, I've reached the end of this video. As I said, if you haven't listened to it already, then make sure you go and check out the podcast, the link is down below, be sure to share it out and show the guys some support, but also, before I go, one more thing from me. Seeing as information surrounding the Division seems to be dropping somewhat more frequently these days, I want this channel to become a great source of Division information for you guys, and while I make videos every Thursday, going forward I'm now going to also make videos reactively. In other words, if news drops, I'll have a video for you guys that very same day. So instead of waiting till Thursday to catch up, you'll instead get the usual Thursday video, but you'll also get more Division videos if there's news worth talking about. Obviously if there isn't anything that week, then you can just expect it on a Thursday, but at least you know going forward, if there's something you want to know, chances are I'll have a video for it. And with that, I am done. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the concept of a hub zone or kind of like a city zone, and if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and hit that thumbs up button, and if you're not already part of the Arax Gaming Nation, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.